folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, join me walking up to uh, Lion Rock to do a, a bit of chat as usual on one of these videos. And today's video, it's, um, I was going to say it's escaping the system. It's not escaping the system. We've kind of done that stuff before. What we didn't focus on, or I didn't focus on last time, was kind of uh, so much of what to do next. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit. But there's one thing um, that I wanted to show you to sort of uh, probably not complete the set as such, but go some way towards completing the set. And that was once you've escaped the system, abseiling down to your casualty, use that word. I know we did mention that on one of the videos, but one thing we didn't talk about was kind of doing a stirrup hoist. Uh, realistically, I needed to be on the crag to do that. And I think that was in the first lockdown when I was... Um, you know, only allowed on the stairs really uh, was we weren't really allowed out to the crags at that point um england's going back into lockdown today so you'll you know tomorrow because you'll probably see this video the day after i've produced it um but yeah i'll wander up to the top of the crag and set something up and then we'll actually sort of go down and do it on the rock face properly well i get a bit out of breath trying to do these uh, pieces to camera while holding the camera up in the air trying not to fall over and talk at the same time all very tricky um so hopefully this one will be useful. Now, it might be that it's a little bit niche, this problem. It involves your casualty being unconscious and sort of deciding that you want to get them off their rope onto your bit of rope to do in a sort of a, a, a tandem abseil and a, a, an assisted abseil kind of thing. But as I've said before, that phrase I don't really like, but it, it does kind of paint the right picture more tools you've got in the toolbox the more likely you'll be able to solve those problems as they arise uh, so I do think it's a useful one so you may as well do it uh, and in a second because my arm's getting knackered holding this camera up you'll join me at the top of the crag having set some stuff up and been ready to go Right, so you join me at the top of the crag. What a view, eh? Snowden's all misty today, but it's lush, isn't it? It's properly atmospheric up here today. I'm not sure if it's autumnal or wintry, but it's definitely fresh and the, the trees are nice and orangey. I won't be able to do it justice. I'm terrible at doing the colour stuff on the, on the video editing. Um, but uh, just a quick plug for the buy me a coffee thing. People have been so uh, generous. I've literally just had one come through about three minutes ago. Uh, apologies if the name, uh, you can see it. Or maybe you're not supposed to be able to see it, I don't know. Uh, but people donating via the buy me a coffee thing. Uh, it's, I'm just so appreciative of it. Uh, it's blown my mind how generous people have been. Uh, and it's definitely given me some thought as to how to sort of, um, you know where to take the channel in the future and stuff like that and what to invest in and stuff so thanks very much and that's that plug out of the way what i've got here is a italian hitch tied off with a slippery hitch and two half hitches right so i've escaped the system i'm not attached that's on purpose i would be attached if i was doing this for real but just to sort of set the scene a little bit if it doesn't make any sense of how to escape the system and win your belay plate back and stuff like that up there i think there'll be a little card to click on which has got links to the other escaping the system bits with the building blocks of how to get to this point uh, i don't want to do it all again because it makes it an even longer video but what i need to do is i need to get a sling and i would do this while still part of the system is still attached at no point do i want to be unattached from my setup right the priority is my mate down there but if I now have an accident and hurt myself, then they've got no chance. So you're number one, look after yourself. Always be attached to something. Whenever you're unclipping from something, think what is backing me up, what is keeping me safe now. So always, always, always be attached. Now the setup I'm gonna use, I have mentioned in one of the other videos, but um, I'll go through it again here. There's a couple of ways of doing this. If you look in the book, and the book for us people in the UK tends to be Rock Climbing by Libby Peters, uh, uh, Mountain Training published that, really good book. They'll show you a way of doing it something like that. So you get like a, a kind of a V-shape 
a master point basically with that at the top long side for me short side for your climber that's one really good way of doing it you'll see how that gets set up in a second i do mine fractionally differently because i just find it a bit easier in practice to do with cold hands skinny slings all that kind of thing and it gets you a fractionally better length i think this is personal choice stuff i just tie an overhand in there and that becomes the master point the same as in the belays and stuff so my belay plate is going to clip in to both of those bits it's got to go through both if it only goes through one and i'm heavier it goes that way if i only clip into that one and they're heavier it goes that way is that necessarily unsafe not particularly uh, but logistically it makes a bit of a, uh, a difference so clip through both sides in a second now i could clip into that but let's save a carabiner with all this escape in the system stuff these things are at a premium so I'll save things wherever I can. On the setup, don't know if you can see, but I've got a spike with a reversed clove hitch over it, literally a spike of metal. Uh, and then I've got a good nut over there, which has just got a snap gate on it. The snap gate, the back bar is against the rock, so it can't come open. And that means I've got some extra kit saved on my harness. All right, getting a bit drizzly, I think. So I've got myself into position now, move the camera to make it a bit clearer, hopefully, where I'm clipped in and safe. My climber's down there, perhaps in a bad way, but they are safe in terms of this bit here. And I've got to get myself ready to abseil now. now. I don't want to abseil on the back of that. I like to keep things completely separate. So I'm going to fix a point and leave my newly beloved uh, HMS up here, my little phantom HMS. Clip that into the master point. It's a bit small. I could put it into the shelf if necessary, but there was enough space to squeeze it in without any drama. And I just want to create a bit of an isolation between what's going to be my abseil line, this lot here, and my climber. So just a clove hitch, chuck it in, do it up. Now I've got a bit of slack in between my clove hitch and the climber's safety to get it snugged up and neat and everything. Right, and I can now abseil on that. So what I'll do is I'll launch this off. Being careful not to knock them, I don't want to make things any worse. What I do in reality, lap it into my hands, make sure it goes off neatly. If you do what I'm about to do, you can guarantee it'll get tangled uh, and that's just gonna cause extra stress, waste time, all that kind of thing. But I'm gonna do it anyway. I'd already flaked it out, so actually that's gone down nicely. Right, next up, uh, got my line to abseil. This reaches the floor, this is key. I've decided that I can get down in a wanna by doing this. I've decided that if I do a counterbalance abseil, it won't reach the floor. Again, there's other videos on that. So might be niche this one, but like I say, worth knowing. First off, prussics, because when I set my abseil up, I tend to put my prussics on first. I hope the drizzle doesn't go on the lens. That really winds me up when it gets all spotty and horrible on the lens. Um, I tend to, personally, I know this is kind of refreshing things we don't necessarily need to refresh, but I mention it anyway. I tend to larks put that on and then I can't drop it. I put my prussic on first as well. Quite a few wraps on this one because I'm on a skinny joker and these are quite stiff, these Simmond ones. Uh, screw you, I've only got a big boa left, which is it's okay, isn't it? I'd rather have a smaller one, save that for when it's necessary, but it will do. I put my prussic on, I check it locks, and now I can pull some slack through. So I've got this slack bit to work with. It makes it easier to load up the belay plate. When that comes off, I want to put it straight onto something. And remember, you'll, this will be more clear in a second, but remember either side of that knot, then I can load it up. And I like to load it up when it's clipped into something. I don't like the idea of dropping it and then causing hassle for myself. Clip them in, do them up. As always with an abseil, check it now. Slide that up to the top, slide that up. And I can sit back on this now and check that everything is in the right orientation. Prussic's locking, everything's done up whilst I've still got the backup of the lanyard. That's really important, right? I'm gonna go now, so check I've got everything I can get. So I'm going right to the floor, so the kit that's up there, I'd obviously take that with me, but I'll leave it there for now. Take that off. And now, as I sit back, just let that dangle for a second, slide it down. Hopefully that's clear. There we go. As I abseil now, you can see my belay plate. It's quite some distance away, but still reachable. Yeah, so it's no great drama. This one, I'm gonna put onto there. And in a minute, that's gonna be for my climber, okay? So that's the part of the rescue setup. So you can see clipped either side of that knot. That's ready for my climber for part of the rescue. I'm just in a normal abseil pretty much. Down I go. 
Right, you join me uh, having abseil down to my climber, which is a rucksack today. Uh, imagine this is a healthy climber. No, maybe not too healthy though, because remember they are unconscious. So a climber that's dangling unconscious, right? And not on a ledge or anything. Uh, so I want to transfer them onto me so we can abseil down to the, to the safety of the floor and do whatever we need to do. Might be a bit of first aid going on here. That, that's me wrapping someone's head in a bandage. Um, but what we need to do first is get them onto my abseil line, okay? You can see my prosthetic has gripped a bit there because I've been faffing around trying to compose the shot a bit better. Um, but I'm about the right height. Yeah, I can lean in now. I've got my hand on the braking strand, so I'm still okay, but why not back it up? I want to go hands-free. You can guarantee that I will by accident in a minute. So just tie a good catastrophe knot in there. Worst case, I slip through and that hits up to there if everything goes wrong here. So it's a good size catastrophe knot done. I can now go hands-free. I can't like lift this climber around too much, but maybe I can pull them side to side a bit, but I can probably lean in and just about get into there there we go my climber let's imagine that's their belay loop right just to be perfectly clear my climber is now on me my abseil line and their original uh, climbing line that's all tied off at the top because they're unconscious and dangling 10 12 14 16 stone whatever they might be I can't just untie this knot because it's under weight so this is where the stirrup hoist comes in I need to unweight this knot, that's the key bit, right? So I'm just gonna, I've got my catastrophe knot in there, so I'm gonna get myself another prusik, which is here. If you're on, I'm on a bit of a ledge here, enough to put my feet on, so that's helpful, otherwise you'll be full on dangling and, and that, but that is what it is. I'm gonna get myself a prusik onto here. I don't need to do it anywhere specifically yet, just with easily within reach, and I can slide it in a second. Ideally a French prusik, because I want to release it under load in a minute, potentially. But loads of wraps, because remember it is a skinny rope, this one. Okay, right. This isn't particularly a safety thing, because they're safe on this, they're safe on this. So this is just like a logistics thing. So I can get that slid up there, make sure it grips. It is gripping, happy days. Get myself another sling. I'm out of screw gates now, so it had to be a snap gate, really. I could back to back, but it's, I haven't got much left, so it's nice to... Uh, keep whatever I can on me. One end of the sling is going to my climber, into their belay loop. The other end is going into that prusik. I can slide that prusik up a bit now. I know there's a lot going on here, but hopefully you can see what's about to happen. The stirrup hoist, remember, I'm backed up, I'm hands-free, I've got the catastrophe knot. Spotted, that's just come undone a little bit climbing isn't it you do these things up and they just rattle their way undone so keep your eyes checking all the time because these little things can happen I'm gonna hoist this climber up is the idea by pulling on this side of the sling they'll raise up and you can see that went loose now, I can do that with a rucksack with an actual real climber there's no way you're just gonna be able to pull on that what we've got to do is stand into it so I've got to move myself around a bit and get my foot up into there Ooh, he says <laughs> didn't do my yoga this morning or ever for that matter uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up and pull on stuff probably this one pull on down to really haul them upwards so I'll go flying in a second with a rucksack so what I do now is gently but with an actual person I'm going to stand up really hard you can see how that joins there I might have to flip that round or I should have got it out of the way really lesson learnt there as I stand up, and like I say, it's really hard work, try and lock yourself into position, by which I mean sort of standing up straight over it. Pull yourself right into the ropes and right on top of them. And then what you've got to do is while you're sort of locked there, remember they're safe on that, they're safe on us, but there is some slack introduced to it all now. We've got to undo this. It's not loaded anymore, that's the key to it. That's why we've done it. We've done that stirrup hoist to get rid of this knot. Remember, double checking all the time. If I'm about to undo something, I've already checked what they're on. Remember, they're on me over here. Now I can get rid of that. And our climber is only on me. 
plus this little stirrup hoist thing going on here so I can release that hopefully sometimes you might need to pull on that a little bit to make it easier for you as well and you can release them release them release them they've gone smack onto that so clear everything up get the stirrup hoist paraphernalia out the way just chuck that over your head for the moment keeps it neat and organized same with the sling that I'm stood in now my climber is in front of me and a touch higher than me so they kind of be sat on my lap you might have put a chest harness on them and stuff to keep them upright as well I've done that in one of the other videos what I can do now is I can get abseiling but not before I get rid of that catastrophe knot because if I bang into that catastrophe knot it just makes it harder doesn't it so now off I go with my climber being careful that that sling was rubbing a bit there so I'm just going to swap hands and away I go well, there you go folks we've made it down to the bottom myself their rucksack and their camera the camera is always the sketchiest bit launching it around the crag look at that view it's amazing isn't it, it the sun's kind of trying to come out it's really atmospheric today well, that's uh, yeah just beautiful isn't it right this video though stirrup hoist kind of rescue stuff and uh, an assisted abseil um, tandem abseil needs practice and you might have to pause the video rewind little sections of it it's hard for me to get like loads of camera angles and stuff as you can appreciate doing these videos on my own but, but hopefully it makes sense if you haven't watched the other videos that we've done previously on escaping the system type stuff give those a watch because then everything will make a bit more sense if you've got that sort of background knowledge as well you will need to practice this stuff we all do it's one of the reasons I love doing these videos because it gives me a chance to practice it's one of those areas that you just don't do when you go climbing normally touch wood uh, so it, they do require sort of topping up every now and then but do so safely you know I've worn a helmet today I sometimes get grief in the comments for not wearing a helmet but usually because I'm completely self-conscious about doing all this kind of thing believe it or not I go to crags that are deserted so there's no one around there's no one going to drop a carabiner or knock a rock onto me or anything like that but today actually being on the wall I've put a helmet on and I've you know stayed as safe as humanly possible and that that's what you should do as well stay as safe as you possibly can right so always think a step ahead what happens if I undo this thing you know am I still on something if you're doing it with a rucksack fine just be aware there's limitations of that it doesn't feel the same it's much harder to do this on a human being for example when you stand up on that stirrup hoist you'll hoof them up as well I might put a note on the video for that but also think about what goes what could go wrong with them make sure really I think that they're on a completely separate system so even if you do mess up entirely and if things go wrong they're still on a separate system that's completely unaffected so they're safe it's really important though just to look after yourself right now do fire away with questions if you've got any I'm always happy to answer as best I can you know that and do request other videos as well I'm trying to you know slowly tick my way through all the different subjects and things that there are uh, I will undoubtedly have missed some and there'll be things that I've just overlooked and what have you so do request uh, particular videos whether it's as part of this self rescue stuff or just a completely other random stuff something to do with climbing and mountaineering though <laughs> my, my specialist subject sphere is pretty small um, but yeah it'd be good to hear those for sure I've already plugged the buy me a coffee thing I'm so grateful for all the support it's really given me some th th food for thought that one uh, sling mountain t-shirts link below find us on insta facebook give us a follow and all that kind of thing I do post different things on there every now and then so it, it might be useful it might be helpful to you um, and click the like button smash the subscribe button on this video over 5,000 now so appreciative uh, appreciative of it it's just completely mind-blowing so thanks wherever you are in the world for clicking those buttons and all that kind of thing mind-blowing far exceeded my expectations for this channel which is just utterly amazing um, as I said far away those questions hope you've enjoyed this video more videos coming up very soon